All right, guys, so this is a quick video. Uh, these are two questions that were sent in by a viewer, uh, Devika. Thank you for uh, sending these in. Uh, so anytime you guys get questions, especially from the biostats uh, that are difficult or you just seen some kind of fine tuning on how to, how to work them, you know, go ahead and send them to the email. It'll be in the description below and I'll see if I can kind of reword them per se. And um, again, the, the more questions you go through, the more you can kind of see them being uh, worked out. I think the better off you'll be prepared for this step exam. So hope you like the video. All right, guys. So in a question that's really long, uh, you just want to go to the last sentence and then read what the question is. It'll help kind of direct what you should be focusing in on. You know that it's biostats because basically there's some numbers involved. It says, based on this information, which of the following is the relative risk of COPD for a heavy vape vapor here compared to a non-vapor? Okay, so they're talking about vaping and relative risk, okay? Um, now, so let's go ahead and read the question. It says, a 45-year-old man presents to his primary care physician because of his, because his family is concerned about his constant cough after vaping you know, basically essentially smoking. The patient inquires about the risk of developing chronic COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, in adults who vape. A cohort study um, revealed that compared to smokers, the relative risk of COPD in non-vapors is 0.1, and the heavy vaping is 0.5. Okay, so COPD correlation, non-vapors 0.1, heavy vaping 0.5. The patient considers himself to be a heavy vapor. Based on this information, which of the following is the relative risk of COPD for a heavy vapor compared to a non-vapor? Now, the key to this problem, the key to this problem is right here, is that when you, again, I, and I said this before, but you gotta, when you read math problems, you read them top to bottom, left to right. Whatever comes first goes on top, whatever is said second goes on bottom, because the key is right here. They wanna know what's the relative risk for COPD for a heavy vapor compared to non-vapor. So which one was said first? Heavy vapor or non-vapor? Well, the first one, the one that was said first was heavy vapor. So heavy vapor compared to or divided by non-vapor. And that's really all they're asking, okay? So the relative risk and you know, that's associated with a, with a cohort, and, we, and we'll talk about this in the next question a little bit more, but relative risk is gonna be, um, you're gonna you know, essentially, well, you're, you're comparing the incidence of, a disease, of what occurs from the exposure versus the non-exposed, um, or the heavy vaping versus the non-vaping, okay? But again, whatever is said first goes on top. So in this, in this sense, the heavy vaping, as we know, heavy vaping is, is correlation is 0.5. The non-vapor is going to be 0.1. And of course, that's going to be, when you divide 0.5 divided by 0.1, it's going to be 1, which is going to be answer choice B. Okay? Now, they could easily flip this. They could say, which of the following is the relative risk of COPD for a non-vapor compared to a heavy vapor? In that case, they, if if they would have said non-vapor first, you'd put it on top and so on, okay? That's the difference. Whatever is said first goes on top, okay? Correct answer, B, okay? All right, and this question, obviously it's another long one, so let's go ahead and just kind of read the question. It says, which of the following measures of association are the researchers most likely to report? You look at our answer choices. Okay, odds ratio, relative risk, incidence, prevalence, confounding. Okay, well, when I see this, incidence, number of new um, over the course of a period of time, and then confounding, that's kind of the obscure one. I can tell you this. Step one, step two, step three, they really want you to know the diff if you know the difference between odds ratio and relative risk. Okay, so just to review back on these, if you see the word case control, you better be thinking the word odds ratio. Okay, and that's one number, and I'm using letters to represent numbers, one number over one number. Okay, if I said cohort, you better be associate that with the word relative risk. 
okay? So anytime in a question, if I see the word case control, you better be thinking odds ratio, and you better be using a formula like this, one number over one number. If I see the word cohort anywhere, or a description of a cohort, I use the word relative risk, and that's one number over two. And if you, if you have trouble understanding that, go back to the original Biostats videos that explains this uh, a little more detail and a lot slower. All right, so uh, let's think about this. Remember, case control has an A and an O. That means one group, ha one, one group has the disease, the other group does not. Cohort has two O's. So neither of them, two O's are the same. Neither of them have the disease. That's your other key point. Now back to this question. A, re a, re a research study was performed to determine if there was an association between vaccination and migraine headache. Um, in patients living in a northeastern United States town. The researchers selected random patients who had received the new vaccine and a random set of patients in the same area who had not. So you got one group with the vaccine and one group that did not. The two samples of residents from the same town were assessed and the occurrence of migraine headaches after the administration of the vaccine. Which of the following measures of association are, are the researchers most likely to report? All right, so Again, let's just, they're not really looking for the number of new cases per se. They're looking the difference between the people who got the vaccine and the people who did not. But here's your big takeaway point, okay? At the beginning of this study, did anybody have the migraine headaches, right? They talk about it a lot, but at the beginning of the day, did this study start with a group of people who had migraines and then no migraines? No, they did not, right? Nobody had the disease. When they started this, nobody had the, dis the disease. When I say disease, I mean migraines. They're, the only thing that was different, one group had the vaccine and one group did not. Nothing about the, the migraines. So at the beginning of this one, they're looking at a cohort, all right? And if you say cohort, your next words out of your mouth better be relative risk, okay? And then you better know formulas, but for this question, you don't need that. But that's the key. The, the key point is case control, A and an O, one group has a disease, one group does not at the beginning. A cohort study, neither group has disease. It's something like this where they're kind of anticipating, you know, what they, where they compare the incidence of a disease between the exposed, between the exposed and the not exposed. Okay? So in this one, they're looking for B, relative risk. So again, thank you for uh, sending in these questions. It does kind of help uh, to know where people are at and hope the video was helpful. Mm -hmm.